Horns up, metalheads. Welcome to Radioactive Metal, The Interviews. In this episode, Snowy sits down to speak with the band Midnight. At the time, they had a hot new EP called Shocks of Violence, and they were just gearing up for the Discipline Tour. So grab a beer, sit back, kick back, relax, and enjoy our talk with the band Midnight. First and foremost, I guess maybe the thing that we should start out with is uh, the first thing we got going on is Midnight is just put out their latest EP, Shocks of Violence. What's uh, what's up with that? Because it's not it's not a full length. You've got this big tour coming up and all that. Why why an EP right now? Uh, well, like most things, it's you know why not? <clears throat> just the way that's just the way fucking cards played. Uh, <clears throat> actually, I got a full album recorded. And, but it, things were just taking too long, you know, with the, uh, not musically, but the uh, album cover and all that kind of stuff. And I really wasn't in a hurry to get anything out, but I just pumped out that four song EP. And uh, so that just happened to come out now quick. I just wanted it to come out really generic looking and kind of, kind of company looking and, and just rushed. And, uh, so I think it, it did come out like that, but I like it, you know, musically it's good. Everything, everything about it I like, but I just wanted it to have that certain look of hurry up and get out, hurry up and record, hurry up and write the songs and just see what would happen for the four song EP. And it just <clears throat> coincidentally happened to come along the same time as this tour, which I just kind of mentioned uh-huh. before, just to, uh, take a chance and actually leave my basement and see what happens <laughs> okay right on right on right on with with that though um how much is this is this ep going to be much of a departure from like like say your the first two full-length records uh I, yeah, the you last it? two i should say um i heard the first the first track that you released oh, okay yeah then i mean that's it's pretty much it. It's just it's like eleven minutes long. Uh, it, if anything, I would say it's more, uh, you know, like the earlier things, just because it's really bashed out and just quick and very to the point. Not that the other stuff is long, drawn out, and extended, but um, just really rough recording and kind of. Uh, Kind of a, a discharge-y, early onslaughtish kind of uh, feel, I guess. Right on, right on, right on. Um, and with with the band Midnight, okay, it's like I believe it's like basically you and like it's kind of your puppy and all that. Would there be able so there wouldn't be a Midnight without you? Well, I guess. Um, there, you know, people thought there wouldn't be a Thin Lizzy without Phil in it, but look at that, you know, he's, mm-hmm. he's dead. Phil in it's around. Mm-hmm. Uh, people thought there'd be no Voivod without Piggy, but hey, look at that. Uh, so who, you know, who knows? <laughs> Stranger things have happened. You know, there's zero original members in Napalm Death. There's zero original That's members true. Uh, in, you know, I don't know, whatever. I'm, I'm not thinking right now, but. Uh, so, but I guess seeing how that I'm the only person who writes, records, plays drums, does the singing, does the guitar, all that kind of stuff. And if I didn't do it, it would be pretty tough for somebody to say, okay, I'm going to do it now. Right. I guess with, right, without right. my permission or I guess without my demise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fair enough. No, no, no. I, I always kind of see this. Yeah, Midnight is a band, but it's, you know, it's it lives or die by Athenon. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a live band. It's a, The band is live, but in, I guess, in spirit, it's just, yeah. Yeah, me, I guess. Uh, fortunately and... or unfortunately, however you want to look at it. <laughs> no, no, it's fantastic, fantastic. Um, and you're once again you're dealing with Hell's Headbangers with the CP. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, they uh, they're just you know well you you know 
Craig, you know, he's, he's one of the brothers involved there. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, they're just right down the street from me, easy to deal with. And for me, it's really simple. You know, I, I'd rather be, uh, hands on and, and look at stuff rather than have it, you know, look at something over a computer and then hope it turns out that way. And, you know, so I can just go to the warehouse, talk over things and this and that. And those guys are real honest. And so there's, so real easy to work with. Yeah. For sure. For sure. No, no doubt. No doubt. When you do play live, like there's a certain amount of anonymity with this band. I would say like you play live with the hoods, you kind of keep everything to yourself. You know, it's, it's kind of sh- shrouded in secrecy and all that. Well, why is that? Is this what is this? Is is this a gimmick? Is there any sort of importance to this? Is just a concept? Yeah, it's just kind of my personality it. anyway. I, I uh, well, like like I was kind of mentioning before. I you know just I just keep to myself in most aspects of life. So I I, I don't really try to bug anybody, and I don't expect people to bug me. You know, that's not like to say. Um, you know, I'm too cool or, 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 or anything like that. It's just, you know, just respecting people's space. And I, I never, I don't get, I don't try to get too personal with, with other people. Uh, you know, I'm just people in general. You know, I'm not a, I guess a nosy person. You know, I just want to be chilling out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right, right. You're not really, you're not really looking for the limelight. You're gonna let the music do the talking. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm definitely not a, a lime limelighter. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not out looking to get free drinks at the bar. You know, right. Um, yeah, you know, I'd rather just kind of hang out in the corner, wait for the band that I want to see, watch them, and get the fuck out of there. You know. Hey, I think you and my co-host, you know, are going to be kindred spirits in <laughs> in that in that way. <laughs> Okay, we're going to we're we're going to play the new EP and all that. And this your music is definitely no stranger to the show. We've played you a couple times in the past, but just in case, you know, we're getting some new listeners coming on board that you know might be just hearing about you for the first time or it's like, "Hey, wait a minute. This is that's that Midnight Band that's going to be on that Decibel tour and all that." Like, "Oh, let's see what 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 they're all about." Before we get to that, Maybe you'd give a little background, or not, 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 not background, but kind of your musical vibe, what your sound is like. And every band hates to be pigeonholed, and you know, you sound like like this band. But you know, at the end of the day, if you're absolutely forced to, you at know, at the end of the day, if we're absolutely forced to, I'd say we could sound like a cross between mid-period Eurythmics and um, probably like a well, maybe like a more modern-day Melissa Etheridge thrown in with well to be your your uh, uh areas there uh, we sound exactly like neil young i should say that there we go okay <laughs> i tell you neil young never sounded that good though <laughs> uh i don't know i don't know that's that's an opinion but <laughs> who were these artists that you know when you first heard them and said hey that's i gotta do that like who just a fancy word just or fancy kiss. just guess guess was they 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 were the man for you yeah i mean when, when you just wow you heard kiss it's like okay well damn all right uh, i can play bass or or you know van halen you know this kind of stuff that you hear when i guess you're 10 years old um, right. you know, you know, it's, I didn't fall into, uh, immediately listening to, uh, I don't know, Motorhead, you know, it took a year or two, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, kiss that, you know, and, and I still love them just as much day, if, if not more, probably, yeah, way more now than I did at a, as a 10 year old. So. Right on, right on. They're kind of the gateway, just to like, uh, I don't know how many episodes ago it would have been now, we were talking about gateway bands and all that, and around yeah. here, this was definitely one of those bands, and I guess, you know, we're, you know, we're, I don't know how old you are, like, I'm I'm on, I'm in my late 40s now, 
and all that. So when they were, you know, when I was at that impressionable age, Kiss Kiss was still on top of the world. Yeah, so like even at your age, I, I know, you know, I'm 43. So I mean, at, right. at your age, that's that's like a uh, for people that I know that age, it's either you kind of either really loved Kiss or or really thought they stunk because they were too bubble gum. You know, that's what I that's what I got from a lot of people that I know. Like, oh man, you know, Kiss was for kind of kiddies, you know, uh-huh. or 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 they just really loved them. That's, that's, I don't know. What, what do you think? Uh, they were. They were kind of hit hit and miss when I, I started listening. Before I got into music and all that, I read comic books. Mm-hmm. I was big into the superheroes and all that. And then when my brother brought the Rock and Roll Over album home, you know, and that was relatively new, it's like I'm looking at the cover and it's like, oh, my God, these guys are like superheroes. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then I just kind of went back and picked up a few of the few of the other albums but then the 80s rolled along and they kind of went all glam and yeah they, they wore more makeup in the 80s out. than they did in the 70s yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right that's right but for the most for the most part it's i guess it'd be about 70 30 pro kiss for uh-huh. yeah 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 and as much as we are going to do to get midnight exposed to a wider audience you're definitely going to be doing that with this upcoming decibel tour now when just look just looking at the bill for this and it's like okay creators great obituary you know awesome horrendous there's a great upcoming band and then i saw that midnight was on the bill and i'm like oh right on they definitely got it right with this now how did this come about with with like like for you did they contact you did you, did you have people in the know at Decibel, or how how did you land this pretty cherry <laughs> gig? Uh, no, they, well, like I was saying before, man, they just I I lay low pretty much all the time. You know, I I, I wouldn't feel right trying to contact somebody for anything. Uh, I feel bad enough asking somebody to help me uh, move a couch or something like that. You know, but uh, so yeah, they did. They just they contacted me. And, um, normally, you know, nine times out of 10, I'd always say no to any tour more than two days, but, um, just figured what the hell, uh, you know, it's been how many years, um, might as well just take a chance, see what happens. Mm-hmm. So either, either this will be our first and last tour or our first of maybe doing it once a year, see what happens. You know, people can take the time off work and we'll go out and act idiotic for 30 days. That's definitely going to be an experience, and I hope everyone shows up nice and early to catch you. So I know I imagine horrendous would go on first. Do you, do you know what this, what the set, what the set times are going to be? Are you going to be the first one on or the second I one? I think we're, well, we're, the, we're second. I think horrendous is first, and then us, then the obituaries, and then the creators. Right on, right on. Cool, cool. Um, is it obviously this is something you're looking forward to from a band perspective? But what about a fan perspective? Like for creator obituary, these are some, you know, some pioneering names in extreme metal. Were you were were you a fan of these bands going in? Yeah, well that that's kind of that's kind of a reason too. Like because I, I I wouldn't take a tour, excuse me, if I didn't like the bands or whatever it's just that's just not me because there's no way in hell i'd want to be around hearing some kind of music i don't want to hear for four weeks straight so oh, yeah, um, and i thought of i thought of it as a as a kid you know as like when i got into you know it, it try, i was trying to think of it as say like when slowly we rot, slowly we rot came out um mm-hmm. you know 89 i remember listening to that album all summer with that and beneath remains were the two, the two hits for me and my buddy, you know, for that summer right. I remember. And, uh, mm-hmm. so just thinking of that, I was like, wow, man, you know, like, you know, me and my friend, you know, for, you know, we're out outside playing basketball and we got the boom box blasting, uh, obituary and, and, and then create, you know, we'd always play creator, you know, 
Pleasure to Kill. That was that's always been one of my favorites, and, and Terrible Certainty, and but even <clears throat> Extreme Aggression. So that came out in '89 too. So I was trying to put it in that perspective, like, man, what you know, that's what I would think of when we were 13 years old, shooting basketball, listening to obituary and creator tapes in the backyard. You know, what, would you think that like the band that we're gonna have would be like playing with these bands? You know how many over years down the road that is 25 30 years down the road or the hell but just kind of funny so yeah i guess if if you're that's a that's a fan perspective that's the way i think about most things so right right on right on right right on i have to admit when i saw the first couple promotional posters or pictures for it and you, you, you saw a picture of Millie and right beside him was John and one of the individuals from from horrendous I forget which one and then there's a picture of yourself but you get the hood up and you can't see your face and all that <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit I can't, I got a chuckle out of it but I thought that is so cool because you know Appenar he's taken He's he's taking what he says he is like right to the masses. It's all like this 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 is midnight, and if we you know, it, oh, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah, that's that's true, man. I mean, yeah, I it, things haven't changed from day one, really. I mean, it's it's not. Yeah, I'm not. And it, yeah, it was kind of funny that 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 picture in particular too, because the you know the magazine asked. You know, because it's a, it's a Photoshop thing, of course. You know, they took mm-hmm. a picture from each dude and glued them together, whatever. And uh, <clears throat> and I was, yeah, I was like, I told you know the guy who was taking a picture, Eric. And I was like, wow, well, oh, cool. All right, it's for that cover, man. We, you know, we can do something really cool and this and that and blood and and ripping chickens apart and you know whatever. And uh, he's like, oh no, they they asked for these certain specific, um, just like basically a headshot. I'm like, hmm. That doesn't sound like any fun. You know, it's like I'm just wearing black with black and a black background. With you know, that's huh. I don't know how that's gonna work, but whatever. So it's I guess with the right lighting and whatever, and the, the, it's there. But it, it, it's it's like I was saying before, it's cool. I'm I'm just kind of hanging out there in the background, and and uh, you, yeah, you noticed. So that's it was enough awesome, for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> How do you think, because, you know, you're going to be introducing Midnight to, or to a much wider audience here now. Are you that's, a little that's nervous kind of, about kind of racist, man. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> much wider audience. Oh, no, wider. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, you got me, you got joking. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. All right, yeah. no, um... <clears throat> Are, are you is are is there any concern at all, like in the back of your hood, that okay, uh, how are people going to go? How are we going to go over with with these people? Like, with the no, I don't I don't, don't want to keep using the word gimmick, but you know, like, are people going to get it? Nah, I'm never worried about that. I mean, if I would have worried about that, it would I would have wouldn't have done it or I wouldn't have done a lot of things in life in general. You know, if, if you're worried about, Oh, is, is someone, is someone going to get this? Well, they, I, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have bothered. You know, it's just something you do on kind of instinct and that's just what happens. So if they get it <clears throat> great, if they don't, that's great too. Whatever. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not here to force anything on anybody. So ran, ran. spoken like a true artist. No. Yeah. <laughs> if 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 and if people aren't going to know who Midnight and everyone should know by now, like come on, but anyone who hasn't heard of Midnight after this tour, another way you guys probably really got your name out there is your participation in the the Green Room movie soundtrack. Yeah. Now, um how did that come about? Is it just once again Someone on the set somewhere said, you know, or in the writing process of the film said, like, this band Midnight fucking kicks ass. we got to get them on the soundtrack. I I guess supposedly what I what I heard was they, they originally wanted Motorhead, but they demanded too much money for their licensing or something. So they okay. got us, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, that's that's what happened in uh, that movie 
blow up. You know, they, they wanted the who, but they couldn't afford them. So they got the yard birds and uh-huh. uh, that's a classic clip in that one. So whatever. Uh, but no, that's, that's cool. That's, that's a lot. Uh, it was, that movie is actually a lot better than, um, I was expecting, you know, of course I don't, you know, I, w- I didn't know what to, what to expect. And, uh, I was, oh, that's pretty cool. And then so we, uh, me and my wife went to see it in the movie theater and, uh, you know, she can give, she's very unimpressed by me in general. Uh, but she's very <laughs> unimpressed with the, uh, music and all that shit. Doesn't really mean mm-hmm. anything to her, but, um, I was like, yeah, let's go see this. They, they got, they got one of the, the tunes I play in there. Okay. Let's go see the stupid movie. <clears throat> and then, so it kind of, and when it came on and it's like, wow, this is a real movie. And that's the guy from star Trek. Wow. So it kind of mm-hmm. legitimized me somewhat in her eyes. Like, wow, what you actually, yeah. <laughs> people know your stupid music. Wow. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. Right on, right on, right on. Okay. Like you mentioned, you know, affording licensing and all that. Like, okay, that's, that's, that's big business for a band like Motorhead, but how is it for a band such, such as yourself that's more kind of on an independent level? How does that work for getting on for projects, for, for soundtracks like this? Like, do you actually see anything for your quote unquote intellectual property? Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's a couple bucks. It's, it's, um, <clears throat> it's something, you know, I try not to, get involved with because like you said we're underground so i don't want to get involved with i mean i don't know what things are like in canada with taxes and stuff but i just don't want to get involved when things are on paper you know i just rather deal and you know cash deals and have it done and over with you know i don't want to worry about w-2 forms and this and that so oh i don't blame you i don't blame you too much red tape Legal, yeah, no yeah, I, and I don't, yeah, I don't want to worry about you know signing this and signing that, and you know that's why I like mm-hmm. working with Hell's Headbangers, and just you can say it, they mean it, I say it, I mean it, okay, there you go, easy, easy yeah, done. You guys like that, you can work on a handshake. And yeah, that's probably, yeah, you know that's that's probably better than you know some legal document that some people made it made up because you know, you're actually friends with the label. That's awesome. Fantastic. Right, right. So, but, but yeah. obviously when you were born, your mother didn't give you the name Athenar. No, so no she didn't. What is, what is an Athenar? Where did you get that name defined? If you can give me a definition of that, the who, <laughs> what, why, where, for. Well, it, it's a very, you know, we, we, it was, it was in the middle of a, a ritual, and um we had 13 black candles lit and but then actually <laughs> then it was at work and <laughs> one of my coworkers is named Athena oh and, uh, and it was just kind of funny we we would just, as a joke put put r's after certain words that sounded good oh. um and and then her name just sounded great with an R at the end of it. Like we would call her Athena, you know, and it just sounded funny. But then I, you know, it kind of like rearranged the pronunciation to me. I was like, oh, that sounds like a cool fake death metal name, you know. And um, if you say Athenar, and so we started calling her that. And then, but she's just totally not death metal like, <laughs> so that's why it was funny. So yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand you having having to do the day the day job and what I call normies, which is just Joe and Jane average that don't know anything about metal, don't know anything about hardcore punk or anything. They're just normies, yeah, and all yeah. that. So I can I can imagine like they just what what you do and all that must be just they just can't really be bothered at all because no, same thing no, with no. with what I do like I I know so I know so many people in my job and all that they would probably literally pound their head into a concrete block block before they actually listen to the show <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> I imagine you you must get that and it's an awful lot but I love that story about Athena and Athenor and all that have, yeah. have you shared that with a lot of people uh i don't think so like, it's nothing that you know I, it's it, i guess it's 
no, not a, a secret secret, but um, I don't know, maybe that blows some, you know, uh, pulls Santa Claus' beard off or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm also a pro wrestling fan, so I don't like to, I don't like to draw back the curtain too much. I don't want. Yeah, right. Right. You know, I don't want to wreck any gimmicks and all that. So I'm treading very carefully here. As okay. You know, yeah. So yeah. Two minus three. Use use that uh, uh, you know edit edit where you may you know <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough as I'm doing my research for this <laughs> I discovered that you yeah, I actually did some research I just well I okay I went on the internet and googled you and all that okay um you did some work with Destructor yeah what was what was your role with that band because I put that band over big time on the show and. You know, I'm old enough that I remember them, you know, during their quote-unquote heyday and all that. So I thought it was really cool to mm-hmm. find out that you had done some sort of work with them. Well, yeah, they were, they were the hometown heavy metal heroes here in Cleveland. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, it was just a band that I always loved when I was, as a kid and as a grown-ass man. But, um, so, I, you know, when they kind of reformed... <clears throat> around the well, let's see they reformed around the late 90s and had like some kind of just a uh kind of regular schmo on bass you know he just and um so then he kind of quit typically like a year or two later or whatever and then uh they kind of asked me and to play and uh i said uh, you know I'd, I'd give it a try so it was just kind of cool to play bass with uh damn excuse me the, um those guys you know so it was uh and they're all really good dudes so i played bass uh-huh. with them and wrote an album or two and did some gigs and uh yeah i'm not really i don't know other other details than that but yeah it's just uh it was really really good time you just knew them from the scene shall we say <laughs> Yeah, yeah, in in a way because, but but not you know I, I didn't really meet them until I joined the band. It was kind of you know, like I knew them uh, because you know those those dudes didn't really go out much, even though they really weren't that old at the time. I and mean, they're they're exactly ten years older than I am, so they're fifty three, fifty two, uh, mm-hmm. and um, but after Dave Holocaust, the uh, bass player from maximum destruction got killed those guys really you know it was it was young they were young when that happened you know they were like 21 years old so mm-hmm, i mm-hmm. think they they took it a little hard and took it you know and um you know so they didn't really i don't you know they didn't really <clears throat> you know it wasn't like they were scene stirs and all that kind of stuff you know so they, they i think they just kind of kept it themselves too and if, if you would see them at a show like at some point in the nineties or something, it's like, Oh wow, there's Pat rabbit. You know, it, it, you know, it wasn't like, you know, he was always out or something. You know, So, um, right on, right yeah, on. I got, I got just to meet him just, yeah, kind of through just joining the band, you know, it was through a friend, through a friend, something like that. So, Mm-hmm. And finally, since we mentioned Cleveland and like it's, it's hello Cleveland, like it's known as a rock and roll town. Like, what is the metal scene, in the, maybe even the hardcore, the punk scene? What what's what's the rock atmosphere in Cleveland like these days? The well, you know what? It, I'm I might be one of the worst people to ask that right now, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um. You know, there's always, I guess, going to be. You know, there's always good bands going to be coming around. But the the, I guess it's Cleveland is just more of a, an attitude than anything. You know, it's just musicians and and um, artists in general uh, have the same have have you know a Midwest attitude. You know, uh, you can't really take life too seriously. Um, but you 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 do you take it seriously enough to where, uh, you know you you do exactly what it is that you do, if that makes any mm-hmm. sense or not. Um, just kind of do your own thing, and um, so as far as the scene goes, though, I I don't know. Uh, 
seems like uh, in general, uh, a lot of tours skip over Cleveland as of late, but. Oh, really? The, I mean, it, it seems that way. You know, I'm, I, 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 I look at things and, but you know, that just, that could be because maybe I'm from Cleveland, you're from Winnipeg and you're like, yeah, bullshit. Things skip over. <laughs> Nothing comes to Winnipeg, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I shouldn't be really, I'm, I'm not complaining for sure, but, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, that that was a bullshit answer to a good question. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. It's an honest one. That's all. That's all we're looking for. That's all we're looking for. How can like you're up on Facebook website? You know, do we just Google Midnight or Athenar, or how can people get a hold or check out your stuff online? Uh, yeah, I guess through Hell's Headbangers and stuff. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not too. Uh, online savvy i don't really you know any if, if the facebook page or anything that's that has nothing to do with i have no doing with that you know that's not that's not my thing um that's all fan stuff and um that's world wide web stuff you know right <laughs> so thanks uh, just throw it in the google machine and yeah exactly that's up. what that's 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 what I, uh, that's the answer for everything. Google it. Just Google it. You know, so there you go. People can figure out stuff. That's the one, one of the worst things I've ever, like, uh, people who still put bands, especially who put their website on t shirts. I don't know if you've ever seen oh. that. That's awful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why the hell would you put, you know, you, you have a band name, and then you go, and then on the back says, Check us out at www dot blah blah blah, blah dot com or whatever. It's like, all right, well, are you insulting your audience that much? Where you, you, you do you think they can't figure out how to look up your fucking stupid <laughs> website? You know, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold yeah, on. Let me write. I'm, I'm gonna walk behind this guy and write down on a pad of pencil and paper and what this website is for this band. It's, I'm curious. No, I can. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. That's, again, just always just annoying as hell. Thanks for tuning in, Metalheads. We hope you enjoyed our talk with the band Midnight, and we will see you next time. RadioactiveMetal.org, rock out. Visit us at RadioactiveMetal.org, or go to iTunes for past episodes and write a review. Listen to us live every Thursday night on PureRockRadio.net. You can also listen to us on Stitcher.com. TuneIn.com, Google Play, and all the other podcast aggregators. You can purchase the music featured in this episode by going to RadioactiveMetal.org and clicking on the episode link. Leave us a voicemail. We want to hear from you. Call 321-80-HEAVY or 321-804-3289. We may even play it on the show. Email us at radmetal666 at gmail.com with suggestions or for indie spotlight submissions. Follow us at facebook.com slash radmetal, twitter.com slash radmetal666, and instagram.com slash radioactivemetal. This has been a presentation of Radioactive Metal. It's not metal unless it's radioactive metal. <laughs>